Hi Pen fans, this is Brian at the Edison Pen Company. I hope that everybody is doing really well. Hey, I am very, very excited to announce a new pen within the signature line. Uh, this will be a pneumatic filler. I know there's been a lot of buzz around the internet uh, as far as uh, I, I've left a couple of hints here and there and some people guessed it right on and some people were way off. But uh, the bottom line is that the Edison Pen Company is now offering a pneumatic filling pen. Now a lot of you might not know what a pneumatic filler is. So of course, uh, one thing that I, that I will say is that if you're watching this on YouTube or on a blog reader, maybe go over to edisonpen.com because on the blog post, I'll have a lot of links set up uh, besides what you see here in this video. So anyways, let me show you this pen, okay? Okay, so here is this new pen. Now you might be looking at this and say, hey, this looks just like a Beaumont, and basically it is. It is a Beaumont. Um, I'll get a little bit more into the backstory, but this is the Beaumont as a pneumatic filler. Um, I'll just show you how this, there's a blind cap here that unscrews to pull out the pneumatic mechanism. Now I'll explain the whole filling system in a little bit, but let me discuss a little bit about how I got to this. When I started working on a pneumatic filler, I was engineering this around a barrel about the same size as the Beaumont, and I came up with exactly this that you see right here, which is you know this, this, uh, this barrel. The section is different than the Beaumont, the barrel is different than the Beaumont, and of course the blind cap, and of course the whole filling system is different than the Beaumont. But once I got this together, I loved it. It was a good shape, a good size barrel, I liked the size of it, and then I started engineering a cap. And the bottom line is that every cap that I tried, I tried a different center band, I tried a different clip, I tried a different finial. But you know what, in the end, nothing looked better than the existing Beaumont cap. So rather than really trying to reinvent the wheel, the Beaumont is already a rather popular pen and it's already a good selling pen. So what, what's going to happen with this is the Beaumont within the signature line will have an option for either a cartridge converter version or a pneumatic filling version. Now of course this is not the only material because this is a custom signature line pen. You know I have other models you know we can choose any material anything that you would like to customize we can do in this pneumatic filling pen. So let me show you, now th there, is, there is a slight difference. I I'm, I'm holding here, this Violet Flake pen is a standard cartridge converter Beaumont, and then this is the pneumatic filling Beaumont. You might be able to see there's a slight difference here in the barrel. Um, because of the internal tubes, I can't add as much taper to the pneumatic filling Beaumont as I can the cartridge, con filling for, uh, the cartridge converter filling Beaumont. So that means that the cartridge converter Beaumont will post where it normally does and then the pneumatic filling Beaumont will post a bit higher. Now for me this doesn't really uh, give me any obstacles at all. I'm 5'11 with normal sized hands and uh, you know the Beaumont feels just fine in my hand posted or unposted and then when the pen is posted it still is not you know it's not so high that it's imbalanced it feels good in my hand either way quite honestly so this is what it is it's 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 a Beaumont uh, signature line you know custom materials and um, let me discuss now exactly what is a pneumatic filler how does it work Okay, so what is a pneumatic filler? Well, the definition of pneumatic is basically, you know, a, a type of system that utilizes gas of some type. So what does that mean to a pen? Um, essentially, I'll, I'll take this apart. Now, on the versions that you will buy, you will not be able to unscrew this section. I'll explain this later, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I have a clear version and the section will unscrew. So on the back of the section, there is a sack. And of course, this sack is compressible. This is where your ink goes in. If you put this sack into ink and you squeeze it and let go, then it's going to draw ink up into itself, correct? Okay, very easy. Now, the next step that makes a pneumatic filler is the barrel. So, essentially by unscrewing this blind cap, this tube will slide back and forth, okay? 
Now, this tube is going to create compression and vacuum. If I put my finger over this and then push these two together, because the barrel is sealed, I'm creating compression inside of there. And because there is a hole in the back of the blind cap, that's essentially how this whole system works, is a sealed chamber with a sack inside that chamber and a hole on the back to release the pressure. So let me show you, and I'll probably give even a better close-up. Oops, sorry. When this is pulled back, and your finger covers this hole, when you push down, the sack deflates. I think you can see right now how that sack has deflated. When I remove my finger, well, right there it came back. When I remove my finger, the sack inflates. Once again. And now I'll do a I'll do a close up if I can. Okay, so if you look closely at what's happening to that sack, when I push, it completely compresses. And right there it popped back open. I, I released the seal. It's completely compressing. When it gets to the end, then it inflates with air. So if we had this in an inkwell when we were doing this, we would blow out or expel the air when this happens. When we remove our finger, <clears throat> then all the ink would be sucked back up into there. That's how a pneumatic filler works. Okay, so why a pneumatic filler? What are the advantages of a pneumatic filler? Um, besides the obvious, which I think is just the cool factor, um, I think it's a really, really interesting filling system. The biggest advantage really is ink capacity. Uh, the companies that made um, pneumatic fillers in the 20s and 30s, their marketing was twice the ink. And that really is the truth. But keep in mind, back then, the pens that they were competing against were generally going to be lever fillers, crescent fillers, you know, any type of filling system that utilizes a pressure bar to compress the sack. So right here I have a J bar off of a lever filler and I'm going to demonstrate for it for you, you know, this is how a lever filler would work. The lever would come down and push on the sack, okay? Well, you can see there's still a bubble here there's still a bubble here and there's probably still some air even where it's being compressed so the bottom line is that any system utilizing a pressure bar never could completely and totally evacuate all of the air out of the sack so you were still getting you know some air in the sack no matter how well you no matter how hard you pulled the lever no matter how you know how well this pressure bar pressed there was still air somewhere but with a pneumatic filler, because of the fact that you're using compressed air, you know, you'll notice that this sack will be compressed even with only about a third of the total travel. So literally, when this pneumatic filler works and when it compresses, there is not any pocket of air anywhere within that sack. So, you know, whereas a, a, a lever filler of this size might have an ink capacity of, let's say, I don't know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 milliliters, this has an ink capacity of 1.25 milliliters. What does that mean? That's almost triple what a converter would offer you. So, you know, for a pen that's relatively, I, I, don't, I don't want to say this is a small pen, but it's certainly not a large pen, for a pen of this size, Having an ink capacity of 1.25 milliliters, that's pretty huge, uh, considering. So really, that's you know besides what I think is a cool factor, that's you know the advantage of a pneumatic filler. Of course, I'm not putting down lever fillers. Actually, I'll probably offer one someday. But when I do, I won't market it as you know a large ink capacity. But with these pneumatics, you know it, it's it's pretty pretty special that a pen of this size can hold 1.25 milliliters of ink. Again, that's almost triple what a converter offers you.
Okay, so now how do you fill this pen? Well, filling is, is pretty easy. Um, I'm using just some water in a glass that's you know transparent so you can see what's going on rather than using an inkwell. Um, but uh, I just diluted some ink in this so you can see what's going on. It's very easy to fill this. You only, you only need to use one hand. Essentially what you will do is unscrew the blind cap. Pull out the piston sleeve or the tube if you will. Sub submerge this into your ink up to the section and then you simply push down with your finger. You'll see that um, you'll see that air or bubbles were expelled out of the uh, nib as I push down, of course. And now you want to wait about 10 seconds. You know, while you're waiting, you can certainly screw the blind cap back in. I'm sure it's been a little more than 10 seconds by now, but you get the idea. The pen is full. That's it. It only takes one stroke to do this. Again, that's one of the beautiful concepts of a pneumatic filler. There's no, there's no reason to do this more than once. Actually, doing it more than once wouldn't fill the pen at all anymore. In order to completely fill the pen, it needs to be empty to begin with. So that's how you fill the pen. Now, to empty the pen, you're just simply going to do the same thing, but you're going to do it without the pen being in uh, the inkwell. Now when you're emptying the pen, it might take a couple of strokes to get it completely empty. But it shouldn't be any more than three. I believe it's completely empty right now. And then screw in the blind cap again. Uh, one thing that I will mention about this is that um, when you, if, if you buy one of these pens, you will notice that the section will be sealed. Of course, you'll get a letter along with your pen explaining everything, but I do want to explain this. You know, on this demonstrator version of mine, the section can be removed, but on the models that will be sold, the section will be sealed. And it's important to know that because obviously every other Edison pen, this section is, is, is removable. You, you, you take this off to access the cartridge, the converter, um, whatever. But in this case, I am going to seal all of these sections, so don't even try and remove this. If a section is removed, then it will void the warranty. Now, of course, I can still service the pen, but uh, you know th there may be a charge. Uh, the reason for this is um, you can imagine that the way that this filling system works, it's vital that the sac uh, moves smoothly along the piston. If, if, if the sac is treated improperly, when this piston slides in, it can crumple the sac, and that's a problem. So unless you feel that you're qualified to do repairs, specifically on pneumatic pens, I don't want my customers removing the section. Um, the way that that sac is treated to make sure that it's smooth and that the tube does not bind is pretty critical. So the section will be sealed. Don't try and remove the section, okay? Okay, lastly what I'd like to cover is general maintenance of pneumatic fillers. This includes how to flush the pen and also there may be a rare instance where you need to apply a little bit of silicone grease. So let me show you how that works. Okay, as far as flushing the pen goes, it's really very simple. You're simply going to fill the pen with clean water and empty it. Do that repeatedly until you have no more, you know, until you're expelling clear water. So if I'm going to fill it here with this clear water, then I'm going to empty it. Now obviously, you know, since I'm in my shop, I'm doing this at my desk or at my workbench. Um, it probably probably better to do this in a sink, but I think you get the idea. So all that you're going to do is repeatedly fill and empty the pen using clean water until you're no longer expelling inky water. It might take three or four fills to get this accomplished, but just keep doing this until you're expelling clear water. All right. Okay, and then lastly, um, and actually I hesitate to even bring this up because this might not be an issue for hardly any customers, but I might as well cover this, and that is when I manufacture these pens, 
I make sure that this brass tube has a little coat of silicone grease on it and that just makes this action nice and smooth. Now, I don't know, it might take years and years and years, but perhaps over time the silicone grease might be depleted or it might no longer have the smooth action. Um, it, the reason that I say it might take years is because think about it, as long as the, as long as the blind cap is sealed and the pen is closed up, uh, this is a sealed chamber. So the silicone grease is not going to dry out in here, or if it does, it's going to take a very long time. Now obviously if you leave the pen with the piston extended, then yeah, this is going to dry out over, over time. But if you ever find that the action of the piston is a little bit stiff, or you'd like to make it a little smoother, which, and like I said, this, this might never be necessary with this pen. You can take a little bit of silicone grease, and I'm talking about a little bit, a teeny tiny bit of silicone grease right here towards the base. I use a broken Q-tip. You can use anything that, that, uh, that you want to apply that with. And then just simply kind of twist this back and forth and work it into that piston, and you'll be fine. Um, every Edison pen, the, uh, every Edison pneumatic filler will come with this small container of grease, so you won't need to worry about purchasing that. So anyways, I think that that covers the maintenance. Okay, I think that covers everything. Uh, the pricing of this pen will be the same structure as the bulb fillers. Uh, it's going to be 350 with a steel nib and 450 with an 18 karat nib. Um, if uh, Again, if you're watching this on YouTube or uh, a blog reader, maybe head over to edisonpen.com because there will be some links as to uh, purchasing the page, what's currently inventoried. We do have plenty that are already made and ready to sell. So uh, again, uh, like I said, I, I'm really excited about this. It, I think it's a pretty unique and novel filling system. No one has really been using this on a, on a, on a larger scale since the 60s. So um, you know, I, I, I'm really excited about this. and I think it'll be a great offering for the Edison Pen Company. If anybody has any questions, please put it in the comments or send me an email. I'll be happy to help out, all right? Everybody take care.